testing that goes on between races in a major sports car team. Well, it's 8 o'clock on a sunny morning in August. We're here at Silverstone South Circuit with Richard Lloyd's Porsche team. Our man Tiffany Dow is just about to put the car through its paces. Tiff, what are you hoping to learn from today? Well, really, Becky, it's two parts. There's the continuous programme of developing the car, making it a little bit faster. But also, we've just returned from the Nürburgring, where we had uh, braking problems. So we've got to specifically look at our brakes and try and get them better. Also, we've got the car mounted up with some tyre temperature sensors to monitor that. As soon as the circuit opened at 10 o'clock, I was sent out in the newer black Porsche 962 to test various ways of keeping the brakes cool. Particularly important for the next race at Donington, with its heavy demand on braking. On Silverstone's hangar straight, we added an extra chicane. And, with appropriate gearing and suspension settings, the flat airfield does duty for the swooping curves of Donington Park. Lap after lap through the morning, I have to drive in exactly the same way so as to sharp the effect of the engineer's adjustments. And each of those laps has to be just on the limit. It doesn't always work. Tiff, you uh, span off. What actually happened? Well, it's just a, it's a handy problem we have when the tyres get hot sometimes, that it, it oversteers into very tight corners. And that was a, a classic case we've seen now of, of terminal oversteer into a tight corner. So, uh, but you always have to push right to those limits when testing to get a feel of what the car really does at the limit. Is there anything you've done about it, or is it just uh, more careful driving next time? No, no, you always try and change the car. You try to stay driving as hard as possible. And uh, the team of mechanics now will try a suspension change or a wing change, aerodynamic change, so that I can drive in the same manner but go through the corner at that speed. My teammate this year is former world sports car champion Derek Bell, five times winner at Le Mans, always in Porsches, most recently in a 962. It's a classic car now really i mean it's been around a lot of years it handles very well but of course technology has overtaken us with the other manufacturers coming in a bit now and we're having a bit of a struggle to keep up but the car basically is a very neutral handling car uh, the power is very sweet very nice sort of power the car has no vices it's never had any vices at all throughout the day it's out for a few laps testing then back to the pits to tell team manager Ian Dawson how the car is affected by the latest modification. There's also some bumps right on the apex which unsettle it. So even if you go in neutral. Does it, does it feel like it unloads in the rear? You, know, you get a sort of an unloading sensation. Well that's what I'm thinking. It looks a little bit like it here. The high speed as well is unloaded at the club. So what are you actually gaining from this little computer printout? What this does is it gives you all the temperatures while the car's running. Uh -huh. um, as you make changes, you can, uh, you know, Wayne's using the box, the BM2000, and this will basically extract all the information from the engine. Um, if we make adjustments in there, this will show up whether the water temperature's higher or lower, whether one gets affected, the oil's higher or lower. It records fuel temperature revs in the engine. Once more, a constant pace is essential, so that any changes in the printout are due only to the engineer's experiments, and not to my pushing the engine harder. By one o'clock, after around 35 laps, there's time before lunch to assess performance so far. Yeah, well, we now have temperatures from the steel brakes. We've got our chicane in to, to be like a Donington circuit where we are next. So we've got temperatures from the steel brakes. Again, we're monitoring them all the time because it's the steel brakes we have problems with. Now we'll try the carbon brakes and see what temperature we get on them. Having asked Tiff uh, what he was going to do with the car, really, it's not up to the, the driver. Really, the whole secret of testing, of being a great driver, is being able to put over to your engineer, in this case Ian Dawson, what is happening to the car, and any changes he does on the car is being able to put it over and saying that was, that was better or that was worse. Two o'clock, and I was ready to try out the red car, fitted with the much lighter carbon fiber brake discs and pads. Now in attendance, checking up on our progress, the captain, team owner Richard Lloyd. My job is to put together all, all the resources, the human resources, the, the material, uh, obviously sponsors, 
um, and just make sure that we keep it running in the right sort of right sort of way to attract future um, cooperation from manufacturers and sponsors alike. It's, if you like, a sort of producer's job of getting all the elements together. And getting all those elements together costs a lot of money. And a private team runs on a shoestring compared to the works. Testing days are a luxury. So did I think we'd had a successful day? Yes, half and half. Uh, unfortunately, the guy, the specialist did the time temperatures couldn't make it, so we didn't run that experiment today. But uh, we run the carbon brakes. We've now got the temperatures down on them, so they're working, so we think we might have to use them for the next race. So, do you stand any chance of winning? Yes, we're still up against, although we're up against million pound major manufacturers, you know, we're now in a good condition for Donington and uh, there's always a chance of winning.